Hey guys, we are back with some more Halifax Tugboats franchise mode. Last time we went through the draft, we went through uh, the resign stage, and this time we have a absolutely wild off season for you guys here, and uh, this is going to be a good one. So we're going to make a couple trades, we're going to make a few few free agent signings, but we can't make those free agent signings till we make those trades because we're almost at the salary cap <laughs> limit. So we are going to make those trades first, and I guess. Uh, I'll make the I'll, we have we have a as I said a couple of trades to make. One of them's pretty good, and the other one is absolutely massive. So uh, we'll start out with the one that's pretty good first. <laughs> Build up the hype. So first off, we are going to be trading with the Ottawa Senators, and to Ottawa will be a couple of prospects in Mo this guy Mui, bottom six forward. And uh, Olafson, seventh defenseman, so put those on there. Not going to be using them anytime soon. They're both in the 60s and uh, both just depth players. But the real piece of this deal is going to be Greg Meyer because, as you can see, he's dropped down to an 86 overall. He's not really that happy. <clears throat> I mean, it could be worse. But, but when you consider his salary, $7.15 million, and his production last year, 24 points, which is the least amount of points he's had since entering the NHL, um, or even before entering the NHL, because he had 28 points his first year. Now, granted, he is solid defensively, but um, I don't think 7.15 million validates his defensive capabilities in addition to his uh, his his physical um, his physical capability as well, because. He, let's be honest, he's not good offensively, uh, at least he wasn't last year, and he was on the second line he, when he was an 88 overall, by the way. <laughs> he had more points on the fourth line as an 81 than he did on the second line as an 88, and he did not produce in the playoffs. He, one goal, minus one, I mean, that's, uh, no, he just, he did not get it done, so we we're going to be trading him. So yeah, that's why we're trading Greg Meyer. His, his just, his capabilities don't meet his, uh salary so from ottawa we are going to be getting curtis lazar so he's uh if you take a look at his defensive stats he is just as good as greg meyer is and he's almost as good physically I, i'll admit greg meyer is a bit better physically but that's not worth the additional five million in my opinion and now i say five million because well lazar is on a 4.4 million dollar deal but uh, as you could probably guess I'm going to be retaining 50% of the, of Curtis Lazar's salary. So, and not only not only does he have uh, the same defensive capabilities, he's more well-rounded offensively than Myers. Now, granted, Meyer has the better shot power, I think, or better accuracy, whichever one it is. But one of one of uh, yeah, I'll just add Lazar to the deal here, and we'll compare him to Meyer. Uh, as you can see, yeah, yeah. So Meyer's shot is better, I will admit, but. Uh, his passing isn't at 80. Offensive awareness at 81. So when you compare that to, to Lazar, Lazar is much uh, uh, better, well-rounded well offensively than Meyer. And he's, the, he's pretty much the same capability defensively and almost physically, right? And that's at a 2.2 million dollar salary. Because we're going to, as I said, uh, as you can see here, we are going to be retaining... 50% of Lazar's cap, so we're going to have him at $2.2 .2 million for a third liner or second liner, wherever we're going to play him. Uh, that is a pretty nice deal right there. And for Ottawa, you know, they need prospects, and uh, maybe for Meyer, this is a fresh start. So this trade makes sense. There you go. And uh, we now have Curtis Lazar. And now the deal everyone has been waiting for. We are going to be going, or trading, with the St. Louis Blues. And uh, before I add the player to their side, we're going to be adding Henry Rowe, who's on the RFA. Uh, who else here? Who else? So, uh, where, is, where is he? Where is he? Is he a forward? I don't think so. Defenseman. Let's see. Uh, where is he? Where is this guy? <laughs> oh, come on. Don't do this to me right now. Uh, is he, I don't see him on defenseman, though. So, he's got to be a forward. 
Where is this guy? Uh, is he a goaltender? Oh yeah, he's a goaltender, right, right. <laughs> the high AHL starter. And then we're also going to be adding two draft picks, two first round draft picks for uh, 2000, not a seventh round pick, 2030 and 2031. This is a big trade, as you can see. And I actually forgot to add one more piece, but is the biggest piece to the puzzle, believe it or not. We are going to be adding Oliver Bjorkstrand to this trade. And the reason being, uh, he's just not been consistent, or not even, well, he's been consistent, but he hasn't performed to the level that we expect him to. Uh, you know, for an 89 overall, overall you expect like uh, 70 points or more on a season, right? <laughs> this guy consistently gets... 50 points like he's like he's a second liner almost and for 7.3 million dollars uh, that that's just not worth it to me so we're gonna add bjorkstrand to this deal as well which is the main piece in this deal as you can see now to st louis aside all we're adding is vladdy tarasank show because 95 overall i mean how can you argue with that 94 offensive awareness this guy is still a stud at 34 years old, he's still got the elite potential, so he's not going to be dropping off too much. Now, he does have a hefty salary, $10.145 million. So that means, as you all know, my favorite thing to do is retain even more salary. So uh, we're going to do just that. We're going to re be retaining. We can't retain 50. Uh, that's a bit too much for the St. Louis Blues. So we're going to be retaining 35% of Vladimir Tarasenko's cap. So we have, a, have him at approximately... 6.5 i want to say 6.5 million dollars so that not only is that cheaper than bjorkstrand we have him for four years at 6.5 as at 95 overall currently <laughs> uh i mean and then with an underachieving row and we give them two first round picks which they could use i mean even though the game says they're a contender but when you look at their uh core like besides tarasenko i, I mean they really <laughs> they really have no one else in terms of, you know, superstars or anything. I mean, there, there's obviously, there's Bjorkstrand going the other way, but, and then there's Hedzik, or not Hedzik, <laughs> Hunwick and uh, Pete on the back end, but, you know, no one that really stands out like uh, Tarasenko does. And their goaltender, Evan Fitzpatrick, 85 overall. I mean, it just, it seems like St. Louis is the kind of team that uh, would be looking, well, I mean, it, <laughs> they would be looking for draft picks for the future because yes they want to trade their draft picks now but imagine in like four or five years when i i'm trading them those uh 2030 2031 picks uh, just imagine their their team then right they're they're not gonna have boone jenner probably they're they may not have fabri and if they do then he's probably gonna be hovering around low mid 80s right uh barbashev same thing uh, they're not going to have Schwartz, so it's going to be uh, a very depleted roster here in in uh, St. Louis if they don't have a good draft. And uh, honestly, I don't see too many good prospects here. When I sort by uh, potential, at least four is the best one is a top nine, and he's 60 overall. So, I mean, he could that that could develop into something as we've seen with like Greg Meyer, <laughs> but um, no one really worth noting so that's why i'm giving them the two first round picks and then zealer as well uh they need a goaltender prospect and this will not go through okay <laughs> uh do i have to uh what what was on this deal before i i know this deal went through um you have to take a little bit more salary off maybe did i do like 30 all right, there we go. So, thirty <laughs> percent. Uh, so yeah, there you go. We now have Vladimir Tarasenko on our team. So, uh, not as much as uh, we didn't, you know, retain as much salary as we want, but he's slightly lower pri lower priced than uh, Oliver Bjorkstrand and a much higher overall, and he still has that elite potential. So, welcome to the Halifax Tugboats, Vladimir Tarasenko. And now we can make our free agent signings. We have a few to do here. Uh, nothing really too big, but uh, there is one 
in particular that we are looking for. And so we're going to sort by UFA. We are going to sort by forwards. And we are going to be signing Brendan Gallagher. Because uh, he, first of all, uh, third line score, perfect uh, replacement for uh, whoever's going to be on that uh, that third line with him or, or you know, whatever. Uh, perfect replacement for Meyer, I meant to say, in, in addition to uh, Lazar, right? So, uh, and not only that, but the part that part about Gallagher that attracts me is the fact that he was a Stanley Cup champion last year with the Montreal Canadiens. Montreal let him go to free agency, so I'm going to pick him up, and uh, I already have what I want to offer him here. We are going to give him one year at 6.55 for one year. There you go. So that he should accept that. I have it uh, written down here. <laughs> he accepted it before when I tested it out. So it uh, sh shouldn't be any different now. Although then again, I <laughs> thought I offered 35% for Tarasenko in my trade before, and that didn't end up going through. So <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. But again, I, he, should, he should accept. Uh, next, who we're going to sign, I believe, is a depth player over here. Um, what's his name again? Okay. Uh, where is he? Where is he? He's, like, all the way down here. But he's still, like, an 81 overall, I think. Uh, where is he? Dunham. Right, right, right. So, he's a fourth-line forward. He's got ex he's got pretty good defensive category, pretty good physical category. Just all-around uh, good fourth-liner that we could use for sure. And we are going to offer him 1.5. <laughs> uh, yeah, 1.5 for two years. Now, we're going to sign both of them. Um, I do have one more player I want to sign. But uh, I, I don't know how much cap we're going to have now. Um, especially since we got Tarasenko. So, although initially I wasn't going to trade Bjorkstrand. So, I, I guess we still have enough cap. But let's just advance a few days anyway. Just to make sure that we got Gallagher and done him. Uh, or Dunham, however you pronounce it, locked up before we pursue that next guy. And don't worry, he's, he's just another uh, depth player. So there you go. Brendan Gallagher signed and Cody Dunham signed. Awesome. So we're going to go back in for agency and see if we can get this guy that I'm thinking about. Okay, so good. $1.8 left in salary. So yeah, that trade actually helped clearing up uh, salary cap there. Uh, he's, I believe, an 81 overall as well. Uh, definitely a defenseman. Let's see. Let's see. Where is he at? Where is he at? Uh, hmm. I think he's like an AHL potential, but he's pretty solid defensively, if I remember correctly. Uh, where is he at? Where is he at? I don't think he would be down here. Uh, where is he? <laughs> I'm looking for Ryan Mantha. Uh, let me go by UFA. Mantha, Mantha, where are you? Mantha, right? <laughs> there, there he is. 80 overall. So, yeah, we're going to be giving him... Uh, he, he actually wants 1.7, but we can afford... Since no other teams are interested in him, we can give him 1.595. <laughs> Or uh, one point. I, for some reason, I have him at one point nine five nine five. Oh, right, right, right. That's because um, before that trade for uh, Tarasenko, I was at one point five nine five remaining with uh, with Bjorkstrand in the lineup. So I'll give him, uh, I'll give him one point six. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's close enough. Uh, for two years, yeah, that'll work for Ryan Mantha, and he'll just be depth on defense for when we need. Because uh, as a, as you see here, he is pretty solid defensively and physically. So, uh, solid pickup, if I do say so myself. But <laughs> that, that'll that just about end our offseason. So, boys, I mean, I said, as I said, uh, really, really active offseason for the Halifax Tugboats. And there you go, Ryan Mantha. Um, we are looking really nice, especially with the acquisition of... Vladimir Tarasenko. Um, <laughs> it's the second time I've had Tarasenko in a GM mode. The first time I had Tarasenko was the Vancouver GM mode I did back in NHL Legacy. The Hensick Tarasenko connection is back. <laughs> I mean, not in the same way because uh, Reed Hensick was a playmaker on Vancouver, and uh, Trevor Hensick is obviously a two way forward. So uh, hopefully, Braden Point will really be able to produce with. Tarasenko and Hansik this year, and then obviously Frank, and then 
all those guys. Hopefully Connolly has another solid year, right? So, man, I, I, I told you guys, we're not fooling around anymore. This is We're going all out. And uh, you know what? Trading those two first-round picks for Tarasenko is worth it to me if we win the Stanley Cup this year. Because, <laughs> I mean, well, this is the last year, right? So uh, in, the, in the GM mode. So I am going to, seeing as there's nothing left to do, I'm going to simulate to the start of the next season, and I'll uh, see you guys in a second. All right, boys, we are in preseason now of year number 11. So let's just quickly check our rosters, just make sure everything is all right, make sure Tarasenko is still a 95 overall. Uh, all right, yeah, he's a 94, solid, solid. Uh, that's about what I expected. So still still very solid, obviously. Uh, let's see if there's any extra players. Well, yeah, there's 21 skaters, so... Uh, LeBlanc, you can go down. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, good. Brendan Weber is an 84 overall. So, uh, yeah, obviously, um, now that we have Mantha and McBain, those two will be fighting for a spot, I suppose. Um, Forward-wise, so there's two extra forward forwards, it appears. Those are Rudder and Salatero. They can go down. They don't belong on this, <laughs> on this uh, part of the team. So, uh, Jamie Benn has dropped down a little bit, 85, that's unfortunate, but, um, ooh, we got the top nine potential as well. So, uh, yeah, this is definitely the year to do it, boys. Um, Connolly, uh, he's still an 85, so that's good, buddy, but his role, back up to a second line four, that's good, that's really good. So, I guess what it's looking like is Tarasenko, Hensick Point on the first line. Uh, second line would be Hagelin, Ben, Connolly. Third line, Kozlov, uh, Lazar, Gallagher. And then fourth line, Hudon, Dunham, and Sissons. Yes, that is good. That is really good. As good as Son Dunham as well, because otherwise we would have had to bring uh, a 79 overall up. <laughs> so uh, that's that's good. And Dunham's, as I said, Dunham's solid defensively and physically as well. He can hold his own. So not worried about that. Um, it's not like he's going to be another... Uh, what's his name uh josh anderson for us so i mean he might be you never know but we, we'll give him the chance he's he, he's solid there so uh yeah and then obviously stellars uh, stellars dropped down to 181 unfortunately uh corpus Allo is down to 191 so uh yeah definitely the year to win it here <laughs> uh hopefully stellars will recover to 183 once the season is underway uh, but other than that, we are looking solid. Uh, we'll do best lines for now, then we'll edit the lines. Um, so let's see. Nope, not haggling there. I want <laughs> all the top guns together. Hensick, Point, and Tarasenko right there. There you go. So uh, then Ben, Haglin, and Connolly. That looks good. Uh, Kozlov, not hewed on. Gallagher. Lazar will be in the middle. He's got a 79 for phase off. So yep. And then Gallagher. And then Dunham, Sissons, and Hudon. Uh, who has the better face off? Sissons or Hudon? Uh, Sissons slightly. And, uh, uh, yes, yeah, Sissons is actually bigger than Hudon. So I'll let Sissons take the face offs there. And we can put Dunham on the right. There you go. All right, so then Hudon can play left wing, yes. So, and then. Over here, we're going to put Brule up with Frank again. They had pretty good chemistry last year. Jones and Puglia, as usual. And then, um, Mantha and McBain. Uh, no, 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 no. Got to have Weber. Got to have Weber on the team. So, I think we're going to start with McBain scratched. Uh, yeah, because I definitely want to play Weber again this year. He's top, top four. Uh, <laughs> Maybe, you know what, maybe I play Brule on the bottom six, because I really want Weber to develop. He's only 22 as well. Whereas Brule is 25. He doesn't have that much time left to develop. I could just put him and Ryan Manth as the shutdown pair. Yeah, you know what, I like that. I want to put Weber all the way up here. I want to give him as much experience as possible on that top pair. I know he's a left-handed defenseman, but he's a shooting defenseman. He could probably get it done there on the 1T, and Frank can pass it to him. Uh, Brule, you are gonna go over here, and obviously Brule will be on the penalty kill, so he won't be uh, he won't be upset about his ice time. Um, I am gonna move Frank down here, 
so that we can have brulee and mantha up here there you go okay move you there and frank Puglia. uh i don't think i want Puglia there so uh let's see brulee is already there frank's already there uh mantha's already there it's either i guess yeah it's probably it's probably gonna be jones or you know what maybe weber because I want Weber to be as complete of a, of a defenseman as possible, but at the same time, his defensive awareness is only seventy nine. You know, you, you know what? No, no, no. We have to go with Jones. We have to. We have to. We have to put our best players on on the ice this year uh, in every situation. So, uh, yeah, Jones, Mantha, gonna move Frank down. Uh, you over here, and then switch Pouliot with Brule. There we go. Okay. So penalty kill is looking like Sisson's Lazar. Uh, Hansik for sure. Uh, Hansik be on the. Yeah, Hansik got to be in the first line. Uh, I guess. Hudon with Hansik. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Oh, and look at that. Hansik is actually now a officially a first line forward. That's great. That's great. Um, so actually, let me check his. Uh, yeah, his puck control is his puck skills isn't as great. Uh, as I would like them to be, obviously, but, you know, whatever. He was he was originally a grinder, so give him a bit of a break there. And uh, put Hudon up here. Sisson's there because uh, they're both on the fourth line where they should be on the third, but that's all right. Uh, power play-wise, let's see. So, uh, Terra Sancho over here. Point. Uh, I'm not going to – I don't think I'll have Hansik on this part of the power play. Uh, I'll put Pouliot. Uh, hold on. Let's, let's see. No, 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 no. Frank with the 94. Right. So I'll put Frank and Weber on the power play. Then Pouliot. And not Mantha. Not. I mean, we could put Jones. Uh, because I'm not I'm not gonna go with Brule on the power play. No way. Um, yeah, I guess we'll go with either Jones or we could go with forward on the point. Maybe maybe Gallagher would be a good option. Uh, hold on. Well, let's see, let's see who's playing forward first. Uh, yeah. So Tarasenko point Ben Hansen Kaglin Connolly. Uh, I, uh, I think I would rather have Hensick on the point, to be honest. Yeah, 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 because he was on the point in the previous years, right? So, it'd be Hensick and Pouliot, and then instead Brule on the wing. So, wait a minute. Hold on. Who's <laughs> who's on the second line power play again? Uh, Haglin, Connolly, and then there's Tarasenko, Point, Ben, and Hensick as forwards. So, Kozlov, that leaves Kozlov, um, Hudon, Sissons. Lazar, Gallagher, and Dunham. So I think I want to put Dun uh not Dun Jesus Christ. Uh Gallagher there. What about Lazar? Yeah, I think I would I think I would put Gallagher there, especially with his uh experience as a Stanley Cup champion. So we definitely need that there. So there you go. Gallagher ha ha Haglin and Connolly. Then Hadsick Pouliot. Okay, that looks good. Uh yeah, point in Tarasenko. Uh Pouliot down here, and then I'll switch Boulet. And I'm actually gonna put Jones on the four man power play just because I don't really want Hansik there. Um, and then Weber right here. There you go. That is it for special teams. Extras, uh, point right there. Uh, instead of Brule, I'm gonna have where is he? Where is he? Weber. And then Jones and Puglia. Yep, that looks good. That looks good right there. Um, no, 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 no. Instead of uh, Hansik, I want Connolly. I want as much scoring as possible with, with that line right there. Uh, and then instead of Ben, since he's dropping, Hansik. There you go. Okay, so and then Weber, obviously, will switch with brule there you go and then three on three will look like this uh point up here extra attackers 
will be yep, Tarasenko, and instead of Hensick, uh, Ben. Yeah, yeah, he's the veteran on here. We can use his uh, veteran leadership when we're on the extra attacker or uh, have an extra attacker. Uh, so yeah, Tarasenko, I would say point, and then Ben. Haglin and Puglia. Yeah, that sounds about right. Or wait a minute, wait a minute. Do I want Puglia or Connolly? Yeah, I think I want Connolly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so that is the shootout. Goaltender wise, obviously, Corpusello and Stellars. Uh, scratched is Russ McBain. And then, yeah, there you go. There are your year 11 Halifax tugboats. Let's get her done, boys. See you guys in the next one when we start the year 11 simulation.